Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to another episode of our F1 Manager Challenge Mode series. Ah, can we finally break this little run of bad luck we've been having? Can we actually get a, a result without some uh, some really annoying drama, especially right at the end of a race? Ah, I'm looking at you Spa, I'm looking at you Monza. Fingers crossed, we'll actually do quite well here tonight. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Water, Anthony, uh, Jason, Farah? Good to see you guys. Right, uh, Singapore, uh, a race where I think we'll do better pace-wise than we did uh, at Monza. Uh, simply, I mean, we did well at Monza pace-wise, but I think this circuit's just going to be a little bit kinder to us. There's less areas where it's flat out. Uh, there's uh, a lot of slower corners in this circuit as you can see a lot of medium speed corners as well and our car is good in uh, in the corners our car is very very good in the corners so you can see uh, not the best in low speed but still very strong uh, but we are very good in the medium and the high speed uh, and uh, our speed's taken another knock look 15th and 12th now so uh, it looks like someone else has brought some upgrades into this race, which is not ideal. But yeah, hopefully our cornering performance will uh, enable us to move up through the field. We're almost certainly going to get a safety car here. It's almost a guarantee to get us a safety car at some point here at Singapore. And uh, that could help us. It could hinder us. It depends on when it falls. Uh, but we can certainly get the advantage strategy-wise over the AI. Because they do like to run very weird strategies with their tyres at this circuit. They always run softs for a very, very small window. Uh, and then switch on to mediums or hards for a very long stint. So we can try and take advantage of that. And uh, uh, maximise the pace of our tyres a little bit better. Uh, we may well go for a two-stop again like we did with the Williams file. Uh, we shall see how that goes. Uh, let's start first of all by setting our targets for the race weekend. So the incentive is just to get one car in Q2. That's easy. Uh, we should be getting both cars into Q3. There we go. Fastest lap. We'll try. Don't know if we'll actually get it or not. We're going to try and get both cars to finish in the points. There we go. And we should be able to keep our streaks going. Uh, even in Marcel. Right. Uh, da, 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 car parts. There's nothing we need to add onto the car. Got spare parts for everything. As long as we don't do anything stupid like crash. Like we have been doing. Uh, oh, we do have a point for Ben. Let's apply that. Before the Grand Prix. There we go. Just improve uh, Felipe's pit crew slightly. And we are ready to head to uh, Marina Bay. We're here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit and the Singapore Grand Prix is just about to start. The name Singapore means City of Lions and this weekend Formula One will be roaring into action. The bumpy street surfaces here make this a challenging circuit for the drivers and the humidity causes them to lose as much as three kilos over the course of a race. But it's also tough on the cars with 23 corners to tackle each and every lap. Good low-speed downforce will make all the difference here. With the season nearly concluded, time is running out for the team. Can anyone make a last-minute breakthrough? Can the leading drivers hold on? Only time will tell. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Formula One. Okay, so we have a dry weekend. A little cloudy, but uh, that's not too bad. Uh, sponsor stuff is done, so let's start off uh, putting on the hard tyres. And swapping out some car parts. Two 
two engines at seventy five percent there. Okay. Let's go with that engine there. Okay, uh, right, run plan for Singapore is 60 laps. Let's take a look at the setup. I'm going to go with a 6.5 on the front and a 15.5 on the rear. A 9.1. Uh, a minus 2.7. And a 0.75. There we go, that's that car done. Let's uh, go over to Felipe. Right, uh, for this one we're going to be a little bit different. We're going to go 7.5, 15.5, uh, an 8.2, uh, minus 2.75, and a 0.95. And that all looks good as well. So uh, let's give those a go. Radio check. Radio check. Okay, it's green now. Ten mil to Bin and Danny Rick. Uh, well, you could renegotiate his contract down to a one-year deal, and then you could get him for get rid of him for less than that. Uh, you can't sign a 16 year old Anthony. What's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? If you're thinking of Oliver Behrman, that might be who you're thinking of. You can't sign anyone who's under the age of 18 and you can't sign anyone who hasn't completed at least two seasons in competition. Um, so um, you'll see some drivers that are, you know, uh, in their late teens or early 20s even that you still can't sign because they haven't completed a second season uh i'll give you an example marino not marino sato um who's the japanese lad uh, who drives for um for red bull um tagawa uh iwasa yeah that's the one um, you can't sign him, I don't think, in your first season, even though he's like 20, uh, because he hasn't completed his second season in F2 and F3. Uh, whereas someone like uh, Jack Crawford, who is 16 at the, at the very, very beginning, uh, has already done one season um, of competition. So uh, he'll complete 
at the end of the first in-game season. That is his second competition season done. Uh, he'll still be 17, so you still won't be able to sign him until you get to around about Canada in year two. Then he turns 18, and then you can sign him straight away. So here come our drivers. We've got a little bit of tinkering to do. Get them set up properly. Okay, so the front wing needs to go up. Let's go to a, an, an eight. 15.5, an 8.2, a uh, 2.7, and a 1. That looks maybe a touch too much. Let's just pull that back and click. Oh, we're really close on this one. Look at that. We're just a click of toe away. So let's just push that up to 1. And that should be enough. Assuming we've gone the right way. Norris Piastri Crawford. Uh, that can be your year two and a bit, you know, you know lineup. But like I said, um, obviously Piastri. What you could do if you want to have Piastri and, and Norris, then you could just sign Piastri, train him up for the first season and a half, uh, and then bin Ricardo. You know, after Canada in year two, put Piastri in in his in his place. And then sign Crawford once as soon as he's turned 18 to replace Piastri as your reserve driver. Yeah, that would work. And that would give you a season and no, a third of the second season or so to uh, to put some points on Piastri where you want to. Just had a crash on the track. Let's take a closer Speaking look. Speaking of Norris, now just take a look at the McLaren. That's a whoopsie. Ooh, 99 for Freddy. So close. Just need one little click. I bet I bet I shouldn't have clicked that toe back down. One. Should have left it where it was. We'll find out at the end of the session. Can I get feedback for Felipe before he gets back to the garage?
Yes, I can. And we did go the right way. Perfect. So, uh, one car is now perfectly set up. The other one is as good as. Uh, that's put us in a really strong position to have the cars dialed in this early in practice. Uh, we've got a penalty for Russell, penalty for Ricardo and Magnussen, Vettel and Stroll also getting penalties as well. Uh, we're at that point in the season where the AI does like to uh, swap out some components for new bits. And Anthony Sun says hi, hello back. Yeah, let's go back there like we did last time and see if that fixes it. Uh, maybe I should have left it on one. Uh, second run, we're going to go with 23 laps, I think. Uh, we'll go with the mediums. There we go. Give our drivers a little bit of space. There we go. So a few days ago, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not, but I was looking on the PlayStation Store trying to find uh, the next game that's going to scratch the itch I have of uh, games like Frostpunk. Gearbox is getting worse. Because I played a lot of Frostpunk now, and I still need to get a couple of trophies, but I'm at the point where I don't really want to go for those trophies just yet because they're really hard. <laughs> really hard. And I just... I'm kind of getting a little bored of just, you know, playing around in sandbox mode. So I've been looking around over the store, trying to find the next game to scratch that itch, something that's a very similar kind of game. And I stumbled across a game called um, Endzone. And uh, it's a PS5 only game. It's not on the PS4. I think it's a PC game that's been ported over, memory serves. Uh, so it's probably on Xbox uh, series consoles as well but um, it's kind of a cross between Fallout and Frostpunk I think by the look of it and I looked at it and I looked at the trailer and I watched a couple of online reviews of it and I thought this actually looks like it could be quite good so I thought well, I'll add that to my wish list and I'll keep an eye on that when it drops on sale I'll, uh, I'll buy it it went on sale last night so I <laughs> instantly bought it uh, there's two versions. There's the £45 version, which is like the uh, standard edition, um, which is, like, I think, called the Survivor Edition. And then there's the Complete Edition, um, which includes the DLC. And they're both exactly the same price. So I just uh, got the Complete Edition, which included the DLC. And uh, that's the one that was discounted. I don't know what the other one's like for discounts. But, yeah, down from, like, 45 quid to 15 80 something like that. Uh, and I've been playing that this afternoon, and uh, I'm enjoying it. It's pretty good. It's a very, very long tutorial, by all accounts. Uh, I've played a couple of hours of it. And there's still a lot I haven't been taught how to do yet. And uh, Aliens Dark Descent went live for pre-orders today, given that today is Alien Day. So happy Alien Day to all you uh, fellow fans of the franchise out there.
What's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? Yeah, I should have left it at one and not clicked it down to 0.95 when I was making those changes to Freddy's setup. If I hadn't made that, we'd have nailed it and had both cars at 100% last time out. Still, it's there now. It's where it needs to be. Uh, we just need to get their track knowledge up and that's it. Right, another really good session. Only £35 is either a really good thing or a really worrying thing. Yeah, this is what I was saying last night. Um, Fireteam, I really enjoy Fireteam. It's a great game. Uh, I have a lot of fun with that. And they dropped a new Horde mode map. Um, for free for everybody today to coincide with Alien Day and, and the launch of the game on We've Switch today as well. And um, that was only £35 at launch. And it's a really good game and I really enjoyed it. Was it might have been £40 at launch, but it was just really short on content. And that's my only concern. The game looks good. Um, uh, IGN's hands-on um, playtest at... Uh, of a, of a playable demo at uh, Gamescom suggested that the game played well um, and really kind of nailed the atmosphere of uh, of Aliens. My only concern is that it's it's going to be good but short. You know, as long as it gets support, you know, I don't mind buying additional content if it come, you know, if it's released. But I mean, if a game doesn't play well then there's little incentive to then shell out anything for uh, <laughs> additional content if the original content isn't good. You've never bought an Alien game in 42 years. Oh, shame on you. I've bought a few. Uh, I had uh, Alien vs Predator Extinction on the PS2. Really enjoyed that. I had Predator Concrete Jungle on the PS2. Um, I had um, Alien vs Predator on the PS3, which wasn't bad. Uh, I had the, the uh, Alien trilogy on uh, PlayStation One. Uh, obviously, I've got Fire Team. I've got Alien Isolation. Um, never played Colonial Marines. I was toying with the idea of getting Colonial Marines till it got absolutely panned. Um, on release, and that just put me off buying it. So I've never we'll played Colonial Marines. Today with the final practice before moving on. I may pick up a, a second-hand copy at some point and fire up my PS3 and give it a try, but I don't have any plans to do that at the moment. Right, just need to complete uh, our track knowledge. So a 19 lap run plan with softs is all we need to do. Ready to check. Ready to check. Green light, green light. I never had an Amstrad, but I, I had uh, a relative who had one. I might say relative. It was more friend of the family, um, but we kind of treated them like they were relatives. Uh, 
Um, they had an Amstrad. I had a, a Spectrum 48K when I was a kid and then upgraded that to a Commodore 64. Uh, the Spectrum had two versions. It had a hard key, hard plastic key one, and it also had a little rubber key one as well. I had the 48K, which was the uh, just the keyboard kind of version of it. Uh, and then the 128 had the built-in tape deck on the side. So I had a separate tape deck for mine. Back in the days when it took five minutes to load a game. <laughs> Do I think games were better then? Um, no. <laughs> games were um, much, much smaller. Um, and they were brutally difficult because there was never anything like an autosave. So, you know, you died, you had to start from scratch. Uh, and that was it, you know. Um, I think uh, Nintendo were the first to kind of really do that with their cartridge system to introduce, you know, the ability to save. I can't remember if they could do it on the NES. I think it was on the SNES. I don't remember if you could actually save on the NES. Do I remember Cannon Fodder? The name rings a bell, but I couldn't... I couldn't pinpoint it. Wasn't there a green spectrum with a disk drive? I don't think so. I don't remember a green spectrum. I don't remember a green home entertainment system. The Dizzy games, yeah, I had Treasure Island Dizzy. Um, I think I had another Dizzy game as well. Um, I don't know if it was just called Dizzy or not, but Treasure Island Dizzy was, was the one that I remember the most. Car in the wall. Sorry. That was um, Codemasters, I believe, wasn't it? That did the, uh, the Dizzy games. There were a couple of games that I remember playing uh, that I really enjoyed. Uh, Scuba Diver was one. Uh, I had that on the Spectrum and on the Commodore. Uh, I really enjoyed Scuba Diver. Um, uh, another one I remember on the Spectrum that I used to play a lot was... Um, uh, Way of the Exploding Fist. Um, Uh, the Commodore had Shinobi, was it Shinobi? Or am I thinking of something else? Might be something else, I can't remember what it was called. I know Shinobi was a, was an NES game, but I can't remember if the Commodore had a version of that as well. Uh, I had Terminator 2, uh, I had Robocop, I had a Batman game that was you know, a lot of fun. Um, uh, another game I used to play an awful lot was a game called Whizball, uh, and I didn't like it at first because I didn't really understand how to play it until someone you know taught me through it and showed me how how it was supposed to be played. And and after that, I fell in love with the game. Uh, it was very weird. It was this wizard and his cat, and he transformed himself into a 
into a ball, hence the name Whizball. Um, and his cat became a little, you know, t- smaller ball sort of satellite that orbited around him as he uh, as he bounced around collecting potions and stuff. It was weird, but it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, and there's another game which I cannot for the life of me remember what it was called. Uh, I cannot remember, and it does my head in because I really enjoyed it in two player mode. Uh, it was a game where you had a little jeep with a with a turret mounted on on the back of the jeep that could traverse um, and fire in a sort of a 180 degree arc ish, you know, um, which would go along the ground, and then player two would be the helicopter uh, above. Uh, and it was a side-scrolling game, and I can't remember what it was called, but we had such fun playing that game, me and a, and a friend of mine. Um, I can't remember if that was on the Spectrum or the Commodore. I think it was on the uh, on the Commodore, but I, I, I can't remember what it was called. And I wish I knew, because I keep thinking about that game every now and again, and I keep trying to remember what it was <clears throat> so I can look it up. And I have no idea, no idea what it was called. I haven't even got the faintest clue. I would probably remember it uh, or recognise the name if I heard it, but I wouldn't even know where to begin to look for it. Did I ever play Rebel Start? No. No, I don't know that. Um... I did have the original R-Type. That was a uh, that was a fun game. Right, engines. Let's go with a 75% engine uh, ERS module. We want to swap that out. Uh, 51%. Uh, I've got I've got plenty of spares. So let's go with that one. Uh, let's put in. A 78% engine there. <clears throat> and gearboxes. We need to change the gearboxes. 64 is fine. And a 73 is fine. I never owned any of the early XCOM games, but a, a, a friend of mine on his PC did have um, XCOM Terror from the Deep. Uh, which uh, I played a few times at his, and I, I kind of enjoyed that game. What's my favourite ever game? Oh, I, I've played so many, I honestly couldn't say. Um, yeah, I couldn't even begin to say. I think it's impossible um, after playing video games for over 30 years I couldn't you know well I suppose nearly 40 years I had a little grandstand pong game when I was a kid uh, when I was a very young kid so yeah for about you know nearly 40 years I've been playing games and I couldn't begin to tell you you know what my favorite is out of all of those I think it's impossible to even come close there have been a number of games that have made a you know a lasting impact on me. Um, games that I'll always have a soft spot for. Um, GTA 3 was such a phenomenal game when it came out. It just was so transformative. Um, completely uh, revolutionised that style of game. Um, and created... Um, a lasting legacy for the Grand Theft Auto franchise that also went on to spawn, you know, no end of, you know, clones like the Saints Row series and and other types of games that played in that similar kind of ilk. Um, God, even the Simpsons did their own Grand Theft Auto version. Um, what was it? Uh, Hit and Run, I think, the Simpsons game. Yeah, The Last of Us, when that came out on PS4, no, PS3, sorry, um, that was just mind-blowing um, to play that at the very end of the life of PS3 and then to get the, uh, the PS4 remaster when that came out. 
and uh, enjoy the game again. I haven't uh, played the, uh, the the remake, you know, part one. At some point I'll pick up a copy, but... That's a game that will hold a very special place in my heart. Uh, Gran Turismo 3 blew me away. Oh, well, all the Gran Turismo games blew me away. Gran Turismo 2 was probably my favourite. Um, but Gran Turismo 3 um, was the one that came with the PS2. I'm thinking of Gran Turismo... Yeah, Gran Turismo uh, 2, uh, 3 blew me away because that just looked so pretty. Um... You know, in terms of a big step up from from the uh, the PS One graphics. But of all the GTA game, uh, the all the Gran Turismo games I played, two has been my favourite. I think. Metal Gear Solid, a phenomenal game. One of the, the most enjoyable experiences I've had playing uh, playing video games was Metal Gear Solid. Especially with the little clever little bits they put in, like the fight against Psycho Mantis. Um, where he would start reading your memory card and to show off his psychic powers. And, and the only way to defeat him was to plug your controller into the uh, into the right-hand port so he couldn't read your, uh, read your movements. I mean, things like that were so clever. Um... Yeah, some fantastic games over the years. Resident Evil One. On the PS1, yeah, it was alright. I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, Final Fantasy VII, I adored. Uh, I still got my disc copy in a drawer somewhere of Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. Um, Dino Crisis was a lot of fun. It was quite an easy game in the end. Uh, I, I completed. I played when I got my copy. I played it through from start to finish three times. First time I completed it was seven hours. Second time was five hours. Third time I did it in three, and then I didn't play it again after that. But uh, yeah, played uh, played that. Loved that game. It was just a bit short. I never played Parasite Eve, so. Uh, All right, we've got a bank of time in. But given that Vesti uh, ended up nearly getting knocked out in the last session, I might have to run again. Let's have a look. Let's prep the cars. Yeah, people have been clamoring for a, a, Dino, a Dino Crisis 2 for years. I think they actually did make a Dino Crisis 2. I know people have been clamoring for a remake. I never played Dino Crisis 2, but I, I do remember reading somewhere about a Dino Crisis 2. I think they did actually make one. If someone can Google and check that for me. I'm not convinced that I'm going to be able to get through, but I don't think I'm going to have a clean run with Ocon sweeping around here. Hopefully uh, we'll get past Ocon nice and quickly. Uh, 
Ah, Felipe get held. Yeesh. All right, Vesti is on the verge of getting knocked out. And he is out. So, uh, we do have a worrying lack of pace. The top teams have brought some more upgrades again. We haven't. And we are struggling as a result. Yeah, I've, I've sold off most of my games, you know, um, to be able to uh, afford to upgrade my systems. I've got a few, you know, uh, PS3 games, a few PS4 games, some PS5 games, but most of my games now are just digital. It's very rare I'll ever buy a disc now. So, Freddy's out. We didn't get him into Q3. That's a shame. Uh, I need to keep a second set of tyres. So, we're just going to do the one run for Felipe. Uh, if we can get him at some clean air. Ready to check? And hopefully you can set a decent time. We're only going to do this one run. It should be green now. So, that we've got two new sets of tyres for the race. You wonder what it's all worth. Well, that's subjective. Um, there's a there's a guy on YouTube that I've been watching for years. Um, Ryan Benecki does the uh, Mystic YouTube channel. Uh, he does uh, news and uh, reviews and stuff for PlayStation stuff. And um, he has just appraised his game collection. And it's about $20,000. But... Um, he will not get anywhere near and he immediately said you know its value is 20 grand if he was to sell it he would get nowhere near that you know the only way you could even get close to that is to sell off individual pieces you know over a, an extended period of time uh if you were to sell the whole thing in a lump sum it you know you wouldn't get the full value because it would only be of it wouldn't be of that value to anybody you know there'd be a lot of games in there that people wouldn't want you know that have no real financial you know value for collectors so he said you know he'd probably be looking at maybe 60 percent if he were to do a bulk sale and sell the whole thing which he's not going to do but you know yeah it's uh it's a, it's a subjective thing And really, the only things that tend to really hold their value are the limited run stuff. All the special, you know, special editions. You know, because everything else is a dime a dozen. You know, they're mass produced. There's so many copies out there that at this point in time, a lot of them aren't worth a huge amount of getting them money. Even sealed. You know, there are a lot of games out there that, you know, are sealed that aren't really worth anything. Because they're not very desirable. And any uh, any sports franchise game, like a, a FIFA game, forget it. That's worth pittance, if anything at all. All right. Can we hang on to 8th place? Or will Perez or Ricardo jump us? I think Perez might. I don't know if Ricardo will. The checkered flag is now out. 
No, Perez does not beat us, and nor does Ricardo. Nobody improves. Well, I said that, and science immediately improves. But um, nobody really substantially improves. Nobody below us improved. So we're where we are. There are a couple of penalties, as you can see. Ricardo with one of them, so that will move Freddie up a place. Uh, Russell might move Freddie up a place as well. Uh, and the other three are behind us. So Freddie will start, hopefully, in the top ten. It's race day. And final preparations are underway. Aston Martin performed well during the qualifying session and they're rewarded with a good grid position for the race. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. And the weather is sunny here today, apart from a few clouds. Let's hope they remain scattered on the horizon. So whose engine will roar loudest today at the Marina Bay Street Circuit? Unpredictable times ahead here at the Singapore Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, this year will be uh, EA Sports FC. Uh, last year was the last official FIFA game. Okay, so this is the strategy. This is the same strategy we were going to run um, and then had to kind of change a little bit because of safety cars with our Williams file on Monday. Uh, it worked for us there, but we had a much better driver and car combination. Um, despite the safety car, I don't know how this one's going to work. Uh, we are lacking more pace than I thought we would. Um, I knew we were going to struggle in terms of speed, but I thought we performed better than we did. Um, we're starting 7th and 11th, so it's only small penalties. Um, only Ricardo is going to give us a boost. Russell is going to drop down behind uh, Felipe, but is going to stay ahead of Freddy by the look of it. So, uh, hmm, let's go aggressive off the line. Uh, we're going to take a lap of fuel out. How do I gamble and take two laps out? I'm expecting safety cars. I'm going to take two laps out. I'm going to gamble. There we go. With the skies mostly clear, tonight's race shouldn't hold any unpleasant surprises. Taking a look at the Aston Martin. Not as close to the front as they might have wished for, but we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. There's the second Aston Martin. With their starting position in the back 10, they'll have their work cut out for them. And we're just moments away now. We're just moments away from the Singapore Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. Oh, wow. Uh, almost everybody's on softs. That isn't great. We're really going to be under the, under the cosh at the start. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved Hello, up. Uh, Freddie has made a good start. Up tenth. Uh, Felipe's gained a place as well. This is good. But it's going to be tough to hang on to the back of those cars once we turn the battery Looks off. Like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. See if best he can find his way past uh, Perez. It's 
It's going to look at launching it up the inside. Gets alongside, uses the battery to accelerate. He should just about close this out. <laughs> Might take him a few corners, but he should be able to hang on. Still side by side. And finally, we complete that move. Okay, right. Let's uh, dial down the tyres and yeah, the battery. Go back up. We've done the hard work. Now we need to just uh, try and stay with everybody. going to be easier said than done. sure that Vesti can stay in the DRS if at all possible. So Felipe's looking pretty comfortable where he is. I think this is a circuit where he's going to have a big advantage over Freddy. Drop back a bit. Okay. Uh, also, he's about to drop off the back of Hamilton. Leclerc trying to break away at the front. Looks like Ferrari came to play this weekend. Maybe it's just Red Bull running uh, more worn out components. And once again, we are dropping off the back of uh, Russell. Partly because of Vesti, partly because of the pressure from, from uh, Perez behind. Uh, I think it's going to be better for us to just let Perez go through when he tries to overtake us and then try and stay with Perez. If we're not getting that pressure from behind, we can focus on uh, just keeping the pace going. We're less likely to uh, lose lap time. And there's enough of a gap at the moment behind that uh, Gasly's not going to jump us immediately. Let's see if Perez goes for the move. thinking about it
so our hopes of a decent points finish are resting I think very firmly on the shoulders of uh, Felipe today uh, Freddy for whatever reason just does not seem to have good pace at the circuit I mean, it's a little harder at the moment anyway because he's running on mediums as opposed to uh, softs like the rest of the field. But even so, uh, we saw in quality that he just wasn't on the pace. Perez gets through. Let's see if we can grab a little bit of battery for the next DRS zone. Yeah, and we got a yellow flag. Someone's in the wall. There's been a crash. Sounds like a single car. We can take a look now. Taking a look again, it involves Sebastian Vettel. Ah, oh, it's not too bad. Clearly, something went very. Drivers are reasonably well positioned at the moment. Perez is going to be a little bit faster than us, but does not have the DRS. So we should, as long as we can stay close enough through the uh, the twiddly bits, we should be able to keep pace with Perez until uh, the tyre balance switches in our favour. Uh, it's going to be a bit harder for Felipe. keeps getting himself on the verge of being dropped. I don't really want to let that happen. I want to stay with this group as long as possible so that we can capitalise when their tyres start to drop and ours come good. Bettles in the pits. He must have had a puncture if he's only just got back to the pits now. He's leaving. He'll have had a, a wing change as well. So he is a long way off the field. And we're about to get dropped. We think we can lean on the tyres more. Okay. So we can close up. This is the last chance I've got to get close again, I think. We can, uh, we're almost out of battery. where we need that little push no, I don't think we made it no no we did just only just And Vesti is uh, hanging onto the back of Perez nicely. That's good. So we're looking, I think, around lap 15, if memory serves, um, for the AI to make their stops. Let's take a quick look. 
yeah between lap 14 and 20 um we'll go for a medium uh, between 12 and 18 for a, a hard so yeah we're we're halfway to the pit window for uh, almost the entire field here and Felipe's been dropped again already uh, I just can't keep up I don't know how Verstappen's pace and everyone else in front is uh, lapping at his pace I just don't quite have enough left in the car so we're going to end up floating just off the back of this train uh, maybe we can stay ahead of Bottas maybe Bottas will close up if Bottas and Russell start leapfrogging each other they'll swallow me up pretty quickly let's cut to Vesti let's get him to start building up his battery again So uh, we had uh, a couple of safety cars and a red flag when we raced here with Williams on Monday. I wonder if we'll see something similar tonight. And as long as we get one safety car, just to help me save some of this fuel, then I'll be happy. I think. Hell, even a red flag could be good for us, depending on when it falls. It would certainly solve the fuel problem straight away. We're starting to drift off the back of uh, Alonso a little bit more and more each lap we're up to nearly two seconds off now but conversely I think we've actually got a little bit more pace than Perez uh, we're using well it depends in parts of the track it looks like we've got more pace uh, but we're using him to get uh, Freddie charged back up again before we try and push past him Russell's got back in front of Bottas. Oh, there's a risk I might get dropped it. I did. energy use energy you can use energy just uh, held the battery on charge for a little bit too long on that previous lap and now we're going to spend a load to get back into range again
and Russell has now caught the back of me. So now uh, Drogovic is going to be vulnerable to the Mercedes, which is not what we want. This race takes forever. Yeah, this is the longest race on, on the calendar in terms of time. comes Russell. Oh, I can't stop yawning. hit with a big wave of, uh, of tiredness. Russell going for the lunge, <clears throat> can't quite pull it off, but well, that overtake is coming. Oh, Vesti's gone ahead of uh, Perez. So I was right, we do have uh, that little bit more pace in certain places. You need Lewis to hit the wall, then you can enjoy the race. <laughs> I think we're starting to reach that point where the soft tyres just aren't quite where they need to be. No, maybe not. Not quite. So we're about three seconds off the back of the leading pack now. Well, the chasing pack. Leclerc's opened up a four-second gap to uh, to Lewis Hamilton, who's now overtaken Verstappen. Uh, that's not good for me or Farah, because <laughs> I need to I need to outscore Mercedes if I want to take third place and them in the championship. And uh, that's not going to happen tonight, I don't think. I honestly thought we were going to be in better shape in this race than, than we were, or well, than we are. Yeah, just, be, just be grateful, Anthony, that uh, Farrah doesn't have a blue spanner. <laughs> or else that might have been the very last thing you ever said on this channel. <laughs> I 
Right, Felipe is holding Russell back. I thought he might have been overtaken by now, but uh, I'll take it. This is why you should never be a moderator. <laughs> You'd do a Sophie. I mean, I've not met Sophie or, or spoke to her, but just going on what you guys have said, you, that's what you'd do <laughs> by the sound of it. I can just imagine Obi-Wan. You were supposed to bring balance to the chat, not destroy it. <laughs> Right, Hamilton is in the pits. That's a very early stop, so that makes me think he might be going on to hard tyres. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, Hamilton's gone on to hards. Interesting. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Here's the replay. So this was the Aston Martin. Guess what you're thinking? <laughs> you're thinking that uh, you have the high ground and that you're going to slice and <laughs> slice Farah's knees off. The team there cheering them on. Freddie's almost completely fully charged. He's charge got to be about ready to uh, start pushing past uh, Paris again. Uh, Drogovic is still losing some time to Alonso. Uh, Sight dives in the pits. And we see the McLarens are out for Ricardo or Norris. It's Ricardo. Sites is going mediums. Got loads of energy. Oh, I thought Russell was about to uh, nick the position from me there. Right, who's next to blink? It's Verstappen. And Verstappen's going for medium tyres. Hamilton's stuck behind Sainz right now. Let's see where Verstappen comes out. 
pit crew's out for Norris. And Max has position over Sainz and Hamilton, so that's not worked out for Lewis. It's a race position gained for a Mercedes. Let's see what happened there. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. I've been encouraging that overtake because I need to start getting Felipe's battery recharged before everyone in front dives in. So I need to uh, take advantage of uh, being in the slipstream and DRS of Russell for the next lap or two before he disappears into the pits, which might, might be at the end of this lap, but I can uh, lose less lap time charging up in someone else's DRS than I can in clean air. We're in the pit window next lap as well. So we're getting close to our uh, first pit stop. The clear boxes. That's got to be for mediums. And Alonso boxes as well. And so does Russell. There we go. So we are now the de facto leaders. Bottas comes in as well. Is Perez pitting? No, Perez stays out. So, medium tyres for Leclerc. That sense on pre Yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning of the stream. Start pushing. We're good to push. Okay, go for it. We just need to push now. Yeah, go for it. Got plenty of life left in these tyres. There goes Perez. Gasly's followed him in as well. So just off on behind us. Oh, we've got a lock-up. It's a safety car. And it's come at just the right time for us.
So who crashed? No DRS. Verstappen's out. There's been a crash. Let's take a look at the replay. Now here we see Max Verstappen. Oh, there we go. That's it. Race done crash. for the championship leader. Tell you what, this is really going to spice oh, things up in the championship between him and Perez. Blow for the team. There's and what, seven really points between them? Their overall chances. And I know Perez hasn't had great pace here uh, this weekend, but all of a sudden, there's a chance to really sh uh, shut that gap down okay. a bit. Uh, we've got a chance of getting out in first and second, well not second, I don't think, but we've got a chance of getting out um, maybe ahead of Sainz here, I don't think we'll get out ahead of Leclerc. Oh, that pit stop looks so slow! Four and a half seconds! Why was that so slow? Ah, we lost ground to Ocon as a result. We shouldn't have done. We had a big enough gap, but four and a half seconds. That was ridiculous. So we tuck in in ninth behind Schumacher. But we're now fourth behind Hamilton, and we're now on the softs compared to everyone else on the mediums. still don't think we've got the pace to win this race not without another safety car later if we get a safety car with about 20 laps to go which is when we're going to be making our stop onto the next set of softs that'll close the gap back up again it'll give us the fresh tires and then we'll have a significant tire advantage over everybody else and that's the only way we're going to win this grand prix i think Well, we're getting some lovely fuel saving going on now. This is a, uh, a godsend for Vettel as well, allowing him to close back up after his disastrous uh, little excursion at the start. Getting uh, full battery back into Felipe's car as well, which is also very nice. I'm expecting the safety car to come in at the end of this lap. And we're going to go aggressive as soon as that uh, flag goes green again.
we're going to uh, jump on the tyres, we're going to jump on the battery and just try and get ourselves up into the lead. See if we can break away a little bit with uh, Felipe. I don't think we've got the pace to stay ahead of Leclerc. I think he will start hunting us down again. That's assuming we can actually get past in the first place. But if we can get Vesti up a few places, we can try and get him into a stronger position. So it's uh, less it's frantic cold. and frenetic for him at the end of the Grand Prix. Okay. No overtaking until the control line, and there'll be two laps with no DRS. Copy. You can stop lift and coast. Copy. Energy if you need it. Our lack of straight line speed really going to hurt us in these attempts to overtake. Maybe we can pressure Hamilton into a mistake. Go on. There we go. We're up past Schumacher. And... Okay, good job. Yes, we've completed the move on Hamilton. That's it. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Ferrari's up next. Can we get up the inside here? We can. Can we hold off that Ferrari? We can. Just about. We've got the slipstream Good of uh, Leclerc. Now we've got the inside into the next corner. Aston Martin with a great uh, all over the back of uh, Ocon here. That's an interesting attempt at an overtake there. It's a brave place to try it. Oh, we've got a crash. We've got another safety car. Car in the wall. That's worked out very nicely because I get to uh, call, uh, call down the tyres, save some more fuel, get those batteries recharged and, and have another attempt. Who hit the wall? It's Stroll this time. Stroll's out. Same place. Let's take a closer look. Now let's have a look. It's Lance Stroll. 
Yeah, carbon copy. That's very unfortunate. So that's worked out really nicely for us. Like I said, we can get uh, a bit more fuel saving done. We can cool down the tyres again. Uh, we can recharge the batteries and then we can have a run at Leclerc unimpeded. We won't have to try and fight our way past Hamilton and Sainz. So it gives us the opportunity to actually try and sprint away. Although I don't think the safety car will be out um, very long because the field is still bunched up from the last run. So I don't think we'll get full full charge in the batteries. just going to get a one lap safety car that would be bad I'd like to have another lap after this Like the safety car is going to do one more lap. to get some battery back in the car about 30 percent so we're just going to uh, stay tucked up behind Leclerc for the first two laps continue to try and get that charge um, in, in little bits where we can uh, and I think we're going to wait for the DRS to kick in and then use the DRS to make the overtake and then use the battery to sprint away. I think that's going to be our best bet because we're not going to have a huge amount of battery and we're not going to have enough to break the one second gap to Leclerc, I don't think, before the DRS kicks in. not sure what to do with Vesti, whether to push him right from the start of the restart or whether to uh, again wait a little bit it took a lot to get past Schumacher um, and we couldn't find a way past Ocon we should probably with Vesti try and push him up as quick as we can before everyone starts getting locked into a DRS train Taking until the control line. 
So a lap of fuel is about 1.8 kilos. We're a little over one lap still to save. Still a fair bit of fuel that we do need to find throughout the rest of the race. That's not ideal either. We can push more. Okay. And when we restart overtake, we will be from control line. Yeah, copy. Happy to push. Yeah, copy. Use energy if you need. Copy. We want to be brave on the brakes. There we go. That's Ocon. Russell up next. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. I'm not quite close enough to Leclerc, unfortunately. I thought I could uh, fuel safe for the first two laps of the restart and then uh, switch to uh, battery charging for the next couple of laps, but uh, yeah, that doesn't look like that's going to work. We have low battery. Just need to charge up. All right, so we're going to have to uh, sit behind Russell for a bit. We have closed the gap to Leclerc through the twiddly bits. But we need to stay on him. Use energy. DRS is enabled now. All right, we should just have stayed in range. Yes, we did. So now we need uh, another lap or so of 
charging up before we try and make the sprint. Let's try and do both. Let's try and charge <clears throat> battery a little bit and save a little bit of fuel at the same time. Save fuel. Yeah. Gotta be wary of sights behind while we're doing this. Stop lifting coast. Ah, we just lost the DRS. Energy if you need it. Okay. Make sure we get it coming out of this corner. There we go. Alright, so now we are just about ready to try and make a move on Leclerc. Need to make this clean overtake here. Ah, you git.
We've got loads of energy. Okay, coffee. This is good, come on. We think we can lean on the tyres more. Okay, coffee. Got him that time. There we go. Alright, we're through. Can we break away? That's going to be a real nice challenge. Hell but my language there. Yeah, I, d I, I try not to swear too much when I'm on the live stream. Oh, no, no, no! Ah, bestie! Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. That's the overtake. We've got another safety car and we've held position. And Vesti's out. Crash. Here's the replay. So this was the Aston Martin. And that's an off and a big off. Yeah, I was worried that we were going to get something like that happen at this race. There is just no margin for error. You know, you, you lock up, you're in the wall. We'll see. You spin, you're more than likely in the wall. So Vesti's out, but Felipe is now in the leads. We're going to save more fuel. We're going to cool the tyres down again. We're going to get that battery fully charged. And then we're just going to launch ourselves uh, on the restart and try and build a gap. I am tempted, I say I was tempted to box and just uh, go to the end, but I mean that's just going to drop us to the back of the field, so there is absolutely no point in doing that. Uh, we need to open a gap and stretch the field before we can even think about you know, uh, dropping in. Uh, Scheisser is shit. Um, mein Gott in Himmel is... Um, it's my god in something. I don't know the in Himmel bit. I, I know the expression, I just don't know the full translation. Is it God in Heaven? I don't know. Yeah, I remember. I remember some of my uh, middle school, well, not middle school, um, secondary school German. I got a B, I think, at GCSE for German. Maybe a C. I can't remember. I think it was a B. But I haven't used it since <laughs> since I was about 17, so yeah, long time. I have a passing knowledge of basic German. That's about it. Not enough to hold a conversation, but enough to kind of follow along a little bit with bits of conversations. I can pick out, you know, little snippets here and there that I understand.
All right, safety car is coming in. Battery is fully charged. We've saved a bit more fuel, which is definitely going to help. Because we're still going to have to do some more fuel saving in the second half of the race at some point, I think. Time to sprint, Felipe. My biggest worry is that we are going to get a double DNF at this Grand Prix. <laughs> if I'm to have any chance of uh, a win or even a, a podium, I need to push now and hope that I can extend the gap on the Ferraris so that when I do box, I don't have a, a huge gap to try and haul back um, on my next set of tyres. Especially if I'm going to have to save a bit of fuel in the process. But by pushing, I increase the likelihood of uh, a lock-up and a retirement. And we know that these two like to synchronize their crashes <laughs> or their spins or their running wides. They like to do it in close proximity to each other in terms of laps. So this should be fastest lap. on 40.6 try and stretch that even more on this lap before we uh, cool the tyres and the battery down. There we go, we've got a four second gap. DRS enabled. And a 140.3. Leclerc definitely faster. That lap, seven tenths faster. Uh, which is what I expected. Uh, I'm hoping that we can still extend the gap by half a second a lap. But I'm a little concerned that we won't be able to.
so far we haven't extended at all. Leclerc's holding pace. If anything, he might be slightly faster. Let's see, we are six laps away from a pit stop. So let's keep pushing the tyres. We're good to push. Yeah, got it. But yeah, we were matching pace with Leclerc there. We've got 26 laps to go. I'll probably stretch these tyres an extra couple of laps before I box. And that'll give me uh, a chance to build up a slightly bigger gap to, you know, to, to come out into when we box. And will also give me a little bit more life on the next set of tyres to play with as well. And now we're getting the half a second that I wanted by uh, burning the tyres a bit. As things stand, we're still probably looking at coming out in last place. So I really do need to stretch this uh, stint. But I also need to push the tyres as well. And pushing the tyres reduces how long I can stretch the stint. So, yeah. <laughs> Not ideal. Uh, that is the tyre wear situation for the rest of the grid. So, uh, we will be coming out on 100% softs. Well, 99 when we get out the pits. But, you know, brand new soft tyres. Uh, we will have a definite uh, tyre advantage over the rest of the grid. But that's not going to help us if we have to spend all that excess rubber just fighting our way through a lot of traffic. So the bigger the gap I can pull at this point, the better. And the more spaced out the field behind the Ferraris gets, the better for us as well. I think realistically we're fighting to try and get on the podium rather than the win here. My main target is to try and get ahead of Russell and Hamilton. If Alonso gets on the podium, as long as I can finish in fourth, I'll be happy with that. So again, try and negate the damage in the constructors fight.
All right, five and a half seconds. It's not bad. Our tyres are getting down to that nasty 60% mark. Now the pace is really going to disappear. We have opened up uh, a bit of a gap to some of the cars behind now. We're now we're looking somewhere around 12th or 13th, as opposed to the last when we uh, come back out. So uh, if we can keep this pace going just for another three or four laps, it stands us in decent stead. We are still saving a little bit of fuel as well. We're down to 0.8 uh, kilos short. So uh, we saved another what, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilos since the restart. Hopefully that means we won't need to actually do any active fuel saving. Can squeeze another five laps out of these tires at this pace or close to this pace I'll be uh, I'll be happy with that ideally I'd like to just box now and get on that fresh rubber but like I said we, we need to try and create enough of a window for us to drop in where we're not way down the order We can get to the point where we can get ahead of Ricardo. That would be uh, that would be pretty good, I think. Forty-one sevens. Let's see what the rest of the grid's doing across the line. Ocon's doing a forty-two one. He just got overtaken by Bottas. So around a forty-two one. We're about four tenths of a lap faster than those guys. I don't think we're going to be able to open up enough of a gap to get in front of Gasly. Uh, we are lapping almost a second faster than Ricardo, though, so we have got that chance of getting in front of Ricardo. Although he is on the hard tyres, so uh, ah, those will hold on better. I think two more laps after this one. Box at the end of lap 43. I think that's going to be our best bet. Because then our tyres are going to be at 50% and the pace advantage that we've got is going to go. about four or five tenths faster than Bottas uh, or less than a second faster than Ricardo about eight tenths faster now so yeah our tyres are starting to go a 
be nice if I could just get ahead of Ricardo. Tuck in behind uh, Gasly. I'm not sure how much time we need. I think it's at least 20 seconds here. Maybe 21 seconds. lost another tenth that lap right we're boxing this lap that's gonna give me 18 laps on these tires on these new ones got the gap to about 20 seconds to Ricardo. It's going to be close. And we have got a four second gap between Ricardo and Magnussen. So we've got that little window to drop into behind Ricardo if the stop takes longer than I think it you know, than it should do. I still don't understand as well why we had such a long stop that first time, four and a half seconds. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Okay. Oh, there go the Ferraris. Right. Where can we come out? Much better stop, 2.4 seconds. We're going to come out behind Ricardo, but we should get out just ahead of Magnussen. Ah, just behind Magnussen. Oh, wow, that stopped up longer than I thought then. So we needed over 25 seconds in the end. About 26 seconds. That's a long stop. So, the hunt is now on. The target is fourth. If we can get Alonso as well, that would be really nice, but fourth is the target. 17 and a half laps left. No saving required. Yep, got it. Save fuel. Love 
Ah, Schumacher boxes. Right, let's get Magnuson here. Oh, or not. You're doing a good job, keep pushing. Oh, Magnuson going very defensive through there. This isn't good. This is good, come on. We it's not good. <laughs> Don't say this is good, it's not good. We're stuck behind a slow car. There we go, Just pushing our way through, or oh, maybe not. Got to get him here. There we go. She's good. Lost a lot of time there. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. And look how much time we pulled out already. So here we go with the uh, the chase. We are how far behind? We are 13 seconds behind Russell. That we can close. Assuming we can get past everybody without getting held up for multiple laps at a time, we can close that gap. Two seconds a lap faster than the Ferraris, and that was a lap where we were charging as well. OK. 
Okay, energy's good. Okay. Yeah, take it easy. Copy. All right, we should be on uh, Ricardo in the DRS on the next uh, straight just to make sure energy if you need it got it we think we can lean on the tyres more got it There we go, much better. Straight through. Good job. All right, this next bunch of traffic is going to be a bit harder to get through. Four cars to get through, all within uh, half a second of each other. Cassidy's not going to make it easy for us. Can we get him up the inside here? Nah, he's got that slipstream. Once again, the lack of our straight line speed is really going to hurt us in these uh, attempts to overtake without... Uh, clear air when they get that DRS open battery already get the tires down now yeah copy go on be brave on the brakes be brave on the brakes nope Gasly's blocking us
Ah, damn it. This is always the most frustrating thing about a car that is really good in the corners and is terrible on the straights. Just trying to fight your way through uh, a train of cars. No! We can take a look now. So this was the Aston Martin. Ah! Actually, we actually came out of that okay because <laughs> Gasly absorbed the main bulk of that impact for us, so we should be able to carry on. And the team had such high hopes today. We've got a penalty. What a shame. We've got some major damage. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got a set of slightly better... <laughs> or do I go with the... Mm. No, these are going to be faster. Uh, we need to change our front wing. Hopefully we haven't got any other damage. Minor chassis damage. All right. We've got a penalty to serve. We've got a big there gap to guys. Norris, though, so we're only going to drop behind Magnussen. Oh, no. The rest of the field's boxing as well. Oh, there goes our chance of a, of a podium. But we are kind of lucky that we hit Gasly there because without that, we probably would have hit the wall and retired ourselves. Right, Norris is boxing. Albon's boxing. Front wing's being changed. There we go. So we're going to stay in 11th. We aren't going to lose a place. Ah. <sighs> Couple of cars didn't box. Hamilton, Ricardo, Magnussen didn't box. There's a chance they may box. We've now got worse tyres than everybody else. But at least we've dealt with the fuel issues. We're going to get the battery recharged. We're going to be right on the back of the field and the next... Or well, the first lap, because I think we might go straight to a um, DRS after one lap. Uh, that first lap is going to be vital for us to really just go for it and try and gain a couple of places before the DRS kicks in and makes it almost impossible for us to overtake again. Because everyone's going to be on really good tyres, so it's going to be so hard for us to do anything. If Hamilton, Ricardo, and or Magnussen all st you know, stay out, that's going to kind of help because they're going to slow up the rest of the field. It might create um, some opportunities for us to try and overtake by driving in clean air around the side of cars that are stuck. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not completely done and dusted yet, but it's not looking good. <laughs> it's really not looking good. And Hamilton's in, in pole position right now to, uh, to take the win with Ricardo as his rear gunner. Need Hamilton to box, which he's not going to do. But I'm going to have spare fuel to play about with, as well as tyres and a battery as well. We can really go for it in these uh, closing laps, which we're going to have to do. 
the uh, minor chassis damage will not help our cause. And if we have another lockup and another collision, that's it. That's it. That's going to be a retirement. That'll be uh, major damage and too much to continue. Farah's more annoyed by the look of it that uh, Hamilton's are going to win this race than <laughs> the fact that we're not even in the points right now. Nice to know where your uh, priorities lie there, Farah. As if we didn't all already know anyway. I'll be in this lap. Okay. So a mad dash for the last eight laps. This is not going to be easy to make up positions here. Pick up the pace a bit. Yeah. And when we restart overtaking, we'll be from control line. Love you. Okay, that's Bottas. Can we dive up the inside of Ocon? Nope. You're in a good place. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Do what you can to keep the tyres cool. Yeah, copy. Screw the tyres. Just make up as many places as you can. Put the AI under as much pressure as possible. Hope that they'll make a mistake. And that you don't. Seven laps to go. Seven laps to go. Beautiful, up the inside there. Now, let's try and make the move on Perez. Doing a good job, that's gonna help you. Ah, nearly. Martin have just gained a race position. Yeah, 
And you can see what I mean about everyone getting congested behind the hard tyre drivers at the moment. This is our best opportunity to try and make up a place or two. Use energy. DRS enabled. Six to go. Yeah. One more place gets us in the points. Oh, come on, we had that move. This is good, come on. Yeah, take it easy. <laughs> I missed it, and Charles, <laughs> Charles got the overtake. I just saw the charge in the, being led in the comments. Alonso's got him as well. We're just running out of time. <sighs> Magnuson is doing a good job of holding up uh, Perez for us. We just can't do anything to capitalise on it. Oh, someone spun. It's a VSC. Who was it? It wasn't anyone in front of us. Oh, Schumacher's crashed. Let's see what happened there. Now just focus on the house. Oh, a nasty crash there. That's given him uh, some serious tyre damage. He's down to just 38%. Four laps to go. We get a chance to cool the tyres, get a little bit more battery, save a little bit more fuel. 
field's been neutralized rather than bunched up, so we've still got a chance of jumping Magnuson and Perez, but beyond that, I don't think we've got any real scope to go any higher than this. It's a bad day in the office for Red Bull. It's a pretty decent day for Mercedes. A great day for Alonso. And McLaren as well. Look at that. Ricardo up in fourth. Saving required. Yeah, I'll do. We think we can lean on the tyres more. I'll do. Be three to go. Energy if you need it. Oh, Perez, you dick. I had him then. And that little twitch. Yes! Yes, there we go. I squeezed out ahead of both of them. It's P7. and are moving up the field. Let's take a closer look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Three Martin. wide through that corner. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> and that's more places gained. You just... two laps left can we uh, get Ricardo and Russell Save fuel. Okay. All right, Ricardo is vulnerable. Last lap, we can get Ricardo. I don't think we can get Russell. Doing a 
good job, keep pushing. Last lap now. Leclerc took our fastest lap Good away job. from us, even though there's no point for it. Lewis is hel holding up uh, Russell here. Well, he will do if Russell can catch him. Uh, Lewis is somehow hanging on to the back of sights right now. Don't forget, Hamilton's still on those hard tyres. Russell will close him down pretty quickly. But I think sixth is the absolute best we can do now. We killed our battery. Just going to make sure we do actually finish. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Love you. There we go. A win for Charles once again. Um, a race that we had potential to do well in, and uh, we didn't. But I didn't think we would be as uncompetitive pace-wise as we ended up being. So, uh, not a bad recovery, again. It's not good that we had to do another recovery drive, but there you go. Uh, we're going to Suzuka next. That is also going to be a difficult What's circuit for us, for given the way our drive. car is right now. Uh, three places gained for Fernando. That's big, big points for him. Big points for Ferrari as well, 16 points, uh, 9 points for Mercedes, uh, we get 3, so the gap opens up even more, and I think that's probably swung the pendulum a little bit too far away for us to try and catch Mercedes now. Big points for McLaren as well, Ricardo couldn't quite hang on to where he was, uh, he was running 4th at one point. Uh, but just didn't have enough pace on those tyres left at the end. Again, with everyone else on the softs. Again, it's a late safety car that's, you know, this time we caused it, but that's what's undone us. We had that late red flag with the Williams drive that undid our, our strategy. And here we undid it ourselves with uh, the collision with Gasly kind of ruined our race um or our, you know our fight back through the field the way that we were cutting through pace wise and catching up with everybody once we'd have found a way through we would have been in a strong position to uh, get ourselves up to the podium but we have to make do with what we can i suppose into the driver's championship uh max only loses one point to Sergio it could have been so much better for, for Sergio you know we could really have uh, put the pressure on Max in the closing last few races but six points that's uh, that's a third place difference between the two of them uh, good points for Charles uh, moves him away from his teammate for the first time in a, a few races you know Carlos has been chipping away at him uh, Lewis jumps back above George uh, as they stay neck and neck in points, uh, 48 to 48. Uh, we slip back a little bit. Our two teammates are now neck and neck on uh, 41 points each. And Fernando has closed right up. He's just one point behind both of our drivers. And uh, is looking a lot more likely to score big points this season than we are. So we might get passed by uh, Fernando in the, constru in the drivers here. In the constructors, big, big points for Ferrari. Uh, it's not enough for them to close the gap to Red Bull, realistically, but it does pretty much secure them second place uh, from Mercedes, I think. And those uh, extra six points means the gap for Mercedes to us has opened back up to 14 points now. 
That's uh, the highest it's been in a long time. It's not great. Uh, Alpine, they closed the gap on us. Are we going to be back in a fight with Alpine again now? We're only nine points ahead of them. Uh, two more points for McLaren sees them uh, extend their gap to Alpha Tauri and Alpha Romeo. So it's looking like uh, McLaren are almost home and hosed in sixth place. But this is now shaping up into a, uh, a, a, an interesting battle. I don't think we've got the pace to challenge for third anymore. And with Alpine improving and Alonso getting these good results recently, there's a chance that we might uh, actually not be able to hang on to fourth as well. Which would be a shame. I mean, our target's sixth, I think. So uh, that wouldn't necessarily be a horrible thing. We'd certainly get some extra hours for next season. Uh, we did lose out bigly with the sponsors, uh, as you can see there. Lost a million. Uh, we failed with the finish position. We didn't get into Q3 with both cars, um, which is what cost us on those and the streak as well. Uh, so, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of money lost, but uh, it's money that we wouldn't have been able to spend anyway. So it's just the disappointment of failing the objectives. It's more than anything else. And we now need some more spare parts for the car. And we've only got four days till the next Grand Prix. So we are missing a chassis. Let's see. We've only got one chassis. Uh, I think we've got a new one about to drop, haven't we? Or did we damage... Oh, no, we damaged two chassis. Because uh, Freddy wrote one off in his collision. So, yeah, that's not great. So I'm going to have to emergency a couple of these. Um, I'm going to go with a third one, just so I've got another spare. And hopefully that's it. We won't need to do any more chassis for the rest of the season now I hope uh, what do we like on front wings we've only got three oh, we've been going through so many of these uh, third spec front wings let's uh, let's do another three we'll have two of those in time for the Grand Prix um, Rear wings are fine, side pods are fine, under floors fine, suspension's fine. Uh, we've got a new suspension coming for the Grand Prix after Suzuka, I believe. Uh, I think I think that will drop for Kota. And um, we're definitely going to need it for Kota. The way we've been uh, just falling down the order, uh, pace-wise, in the last few races, it's not not really encouraging. Right, drivers, uh, we have a point for Freddy. I see his control rating's already pretty high. I was thinking, do I need to put a point in there? But let's put a point in his cornering. Felipe doesn't have a point to spend anyway. Uh, staff, we do have a new point for Alessandro. Uh, what do we need to work on for next season? Probably drag reduction. Uh, engineers are good. Uh, let's take a look at the pit crew. Yeah, wing adjustment definitely needs to be improved. Still. Uh, anything to do facility wise? Nothing is broken. All right, we've got some scouting uh, complete. Fernando is out of contract at the end of this season. So he only signed a one-year extension with Alpine. Interesting. Uh, Ocon is out of contract at the end of next season, uh, as is Gasly. So Gasly signed a two-year extension, and Ricardo is out of contract at the end of this season. Uh, so... Let's start scouting some other drivers. Uh, we want to scout Magnussen. We've got five scouts available. Uh, we want to scout Joe. Uh, we want to scout Albon. Uh, 
Giovinazzi. No, I'll hold off on Giovinazzi. Uh, Piastri, yes. I do want to scout Piastri, just so I can see how he's coming along. Might be a while till he gets his uh, chance to uh, drive for, McLaren, uh, for Mercedes. Uh, Yuki is out of contract. I don't even think I noticed that. Teo is, is, oh, is the reserve driver. So who's... Oh, it's Albon. Stroll and... Uh, do as the reserve. Stroll and Joe at Williams. Yeah, I, I never even realised that Yuki was out of contract. Okay. Uh, interesting. And... Uh, is that all of our scouts? That's all of our scouts. Uh, actually, while we're here, as well so these are probably going to be our uh, choices for reserve driver next season uh, Hajar, Halga, Crawford and Iwasa uh, they're the four that I'm uh, I'm looking at for next season uh, to actually uh, take over from Nico Hulkenberg and we can start prepping a driver to take over from one of the two that we've got that is uh, Dennis's stats. His braking's not great. His reaction is pretty bad, but his cornering's good. Uh, good accuracy, good control. Smoothness can be worked on. He's very adaptable. Good overtaking, good defending. He can be trained nicely. This is Crawford's. Um, pretty good balance across his stats. Uh, it's got a bit of a head start on his braking compared to his other stats. His adaptability's not great. His overtaking and defending are pretty low. Uh, Iwasa, he's got some pretty good looking stats, his defending and overtaking are strong, his adaptability is good, smoothness isn't bad, controls good, accuracy is decent, reactions are good, braking's not far off, cornering needs some work, but, hmm, and then Hajar is kind of the worst of the bunch, but it's got real potential. Hmm. That's going to be an interesting decision as to who to go for as my reserve for next season. I really don't know which way to go on that. We are still exceeding expectations brilliantly, apparently. Um, which I suppose is fair. Uh, let's see. Did we start work on the next scout upgrade we did 80 days till the next one okay uh hospitality is getting close to breaking so let's go ahead and just upgrade that now boardroom is gonna need a refurb soon helipad is okay memorabilia room let's go ahead and upgrade that uh we can't buy anything in here but we are gonna need to do a refurb on the wind tunnel uh, I might hold off and just do an upgrade on that next season. I don't know. Suspension simulator, that's going to need some work as well. This is the car park test center. Yeah, few facilities uh, about to uh, become problematic. Okay. So, uh, let's leave it there for tonight. We'll rebuild the car tomorrow and we'll uh, see what the damage was to the powertrain components as well. Uh, tomorrow, Suzuka is going to be a tough race. 
uh, it's a fast circuit and uh, our straight line speed just is not there um, we've really dropped off the ball uh, in that regards in that regard to the rest of the field um, we're falling further and further down the speed trap uh, our cornering still remains strong which will be helpful because it's a very flowing circuit uh, oh it's going to be a wet race oh that's not good either combine that and then that'll negate some of the straight line speed issues but combine that with our drivers unpredictability recently well predictably unpredictable um and uh, their low adaptability ratings means that's going to be very very rough indeed we'll be strong through the very first sector we're strong through the final sector um in terms of the corners first sector is where we're going to be at our best you know uh, coming out the uh the center s's and uh, and through the Degnus up to the hairpin and then it's probably going to start going a bit wrong for us I would not be at all surprised to see us lock up at that hairpin um, and maybe go in the wall at some point over the weekend uh, I would expect us to probably run wide a little bit at Spoon uh, yeah anything can happen it's, it's going to be an interesting Grand Prix so uh, until then, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager Challenge Mode very soon.